Hello and welcome to another Synth Sound Set walkthrough with me, The Unfinished. We are now on to Volume 2 of Zebra Lazarus. If you've already watched Volume 1, apologies for the repetition that you're about to hear. If you haven't, hooray! You haven't heard all this rubbish already. Right then, so Zebra Lazarus is a collection of uh, lots of sounds, 800 in total if you get all the versions, um, which is... It's kind of where cinematic music and the dance floor meets because uh, it's inspired by very synth-heavy game scores like the Deus Ex series, uh, the uh, Mass Effect series, Mirror's Edge, um, and Quantum Break in particular, as well as the Deus Ex ones. Uh, inspired by all of that sort of thing, a real feel for uh, modern synth sound, so... None of that uh, classic analog thing and none of the sort of weird and noisy, organic, Scandi stuff I've been doing recently. Um, it's straight up synthesis, modern um, and very versatile. You know, I reckon you can do anything from minimalist ambient right up to epic trailer music with this. Uh, and it'll serve you very well for all of those. Um, so... Um, in lieu of wanting to try and completely repeat myself, I'm going to just jump straight into some sounds. And here we go. We're going to go with some ARPs. This is Lazarus Volume 2. Nice bit of bum notage there. Guesses for the references on that particular patch, but I have actually modernized it for this sound set. There are lots of um, punchy, dynamic, filtered, um, slightly gritty sort of edge to them. Lush, plucky sounds, some nice bleepy stuff like this one as well. Lots of atmosphere, lots of drama, but very much about modern synthesis. So it's not... Uh, there's a real good mix of dark and light. There is some sort of dark stuff, particularly in the bassy things, the bass lines and the basses, but... Um... Oh, I do apologize. It says play four notes for best results. Okay. Will these four notes do? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yes. So there's a real vibe of... There's a real mixture, actually, of analog and digital to the extent that it does... F I think it feels like sort of those classic virtual analog synth sounds that um, were very popular in as far back as the 90s, but also very strongly during the... Uh, the noughties. I don't like saying noughties, but what else are you going to call it? You can't call it the zeros. That sounds a bit mental. Um, yeah, so, you know, classic synths like the Axis Virus, the Roland JP8000, the Clavier Nord Leads, that kind of thing. And also some of the Waldorf stuff that was coming out at the same time, which was very more sort of wave table -y. Punchy, pulsy, bouncy. Um... <laughs> Sorry, that just sounded so mental. Um, I mean, it is all of those things, but that just sounded like um, I was trying to start some new collection of seven dwarves, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry. See, this is what happens when I've already done one walkthrough. What we all? Go a bit mental, sorry. But yes, I mean, I've I've loved the Deus Ex Human Revolution sound set, uh, soundtrack, rather, sorry, for a very long time. Probably because I have always been a bit of a dance um, music guy. I uh, loved trance music when that came around. 
but before that I was into the classic sort of Chicago and Detroit house in the late 80s, rave music, techno, great beat, I've loved it all. And so when I heard Deus Ex and I thought, oh, these are the sounds that I used to love, but be, being used in a really cinematic, epic environment. Suited me down to the ground. And the uh, the Deus Ex uh, Mankind Divided soundtrack, which uh, my very good friend Sasha Tikchen uh, wrote a f- reasonable chunk, probably most of it. Um, he's also a really good sort of evolution of that sound. I did contribute a handful of patches. I didn't work directly with Sasha in the usual sense of um, making some original sounds for him, but um, I sent him a bunch of unreleased stuff that I thought would be perfect for it, um, uh, which he did end up using. But uh, Sasha and I go way back. He was um, very good to me when I first started out. Without him, I wouldn't be where I am today, that's absolutely certain. So I have a lot of love and respect for that man, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Which is nice. Ooh, I like that. Yes. Surprising amount of reverb on some of these basses because I just think it really lends itself well to that sound. Almost went into Mission Impossible there, but pulled back at the last second. So if you're not a film composer, like um, I mean, most of my customers and all, pretty much all my clients are, except for one new client I've had recently, um, excuse me a moment, <coughs> I'll let that cough out later, it's annoying, um, yes, I have a new client who is not a film composer. I've wandered into the world of pop music, my friends. <laughs> But yes, if you are a film, not a film music composer, um, I do have quite a few sort of electronic artists that are customers, and I think this is this is really good for it. Then drums. Uh, my good friend Laurent Veronet uh, has provided uh, an airwave demo track for me, so that really shows it in a in a very sort of trancey dancey um, vibe. Some nice bright and crisp keys. Which really bring out the uh, the sort of mirror's edge uh, influence, I think. Very 
bit trancy, that one. It's a handful of loops. Not as many as usual, just some nice little rhythmic bits and bobs. One thing I have actually noticed um, is when I was thinking about um, writing my one mallet sound in the whole set, the 800 patches and Two of them are mallets. <laughs> That's a nice one, at least. Um, yes, where was I? Yes, so I noticed I was listening back to um, some of the Inspiration sound set, soundtracks, um, Deus Ex, Mirror's Edge in particular, and Quantum Break, um, when I was thinking about what sort of demo tracks I should write myself, because I've written two demo tracks. And it just it just came back to me that there's a bunch of sounds that I haven't really covered. I know, I've done 800 sounds, and I haven't covered some stuff. Um, so I think there's quite a good chance that I might be tempted into doing, at the very least, a volume three of Lazarus at some point. Especially, of course, if you all buy it in your droves, um, you know, and it is popular. I will certainly make a volume three. Because it has been damn fun making this one. Fun, nostalgic. And it's given me an opportunity to do a lot more lighter sounds as well. Although I missed a bit. I'm still, at some point, I do need to do something of an ambient sound set for Zebra. Uh, so if you've got any ideas of uh, artists uh, and albums that you would like me to sort of listen to, to inspire me to get off my backside and do an ambient sound set. I'm all ears. I know Skyrim will be on that, uh, that playlist. Probably some stuff off the, uh, the rather wonderful French Ultimate uh, music label. So yeah, it's very lush pads, lots of lushiness. But instead of being, you know, really analog like some of my more recent stuff has been, this is very um, that sort of that virtual analog style. It ain't analog. It ain't digital. It's somewhere in between.
the module does. Bit of a dirty subsoil that one, isn't it? Okay, handful of soundscapes. The subtly evolving deep analog business. Very synthy. So quite nice for just sort of setting the scene, basically. And then the sequences section, that's a nice big section, because um, it's quite important to this style for me. That sort of choppy harmonic thing going on there. Now it's useful just to sit under stuff. Give it that just that little bit of energy and movement. Uh, oh, play two notes, sorry. Draft. Oh well, this patch can't be finished. Quite a few things. I am rubbish. Um, I really have not been using the. Uh, multi-stage envelopes enough in my sound sets. I almost feel like I should just sit down and, and make a whole sound set just doing interesting pulses and sequences with the, the multi-stage envelopes. Because I have been, I've been not good enough with uh, uh, using, ah, so here we go. Uh, a patch called Lazarus. Well, this must be the sort of the the, the complete ethos of the sound set, mustn't it? Yes, I rather think it is. Now, the only problem <laughs> with trying to create recreate sounds that you really love is that they're never good enough. Never bloody good enough. You never know all the extra processing that's done after the synth sound has been programmed and all that sort of business. Try as hard as I might, I was never quite happy with it. But I think they'll come with some good sounds. When I was doing a bit of research for this sound set, I must admit, I, I sort of... Um, I, I put in Deus Ex on uh, the search engine in, in both KVR and VI Control and got a lot of... Um, a lot of results. So <laughs> it was quite interesting to see people talking about how to get that sound and the madness that crept in as people tried and tried and tried and never got there. <laughs> and it was the same for me. I hope I've got close enough for some people. <laughs> if not myself. And here is, here's a very, very trancey one. I went for it on this one. Oh, 
Ah, uh, how I wish I'd been able to get my hands on something as beautiful as Zebra 2 when I was into trance music in the 90s. But, alas, I was sat at home with my Yamaha remix. <laughs> Churning out absolute crap. Never mind. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that is um, the Zebra 2 part of Volume 2 of Lazarus. Um, so let us go and have a little look at, at the... Dark Zebra stuff. And we'll whiz through these patches a little bit quicker because we don't want to be here for absolutely ever. Um, so there's a darker, more analog vibe, as you would expect. Um, and here we go. Sometimes with... Uh, <laughs> when you put, put a sort of... Fairly simplistic um, and, uh, synth sound. I just run it through the dark zebra. It just feels like the compressor going mental. Um, it's almost like going, well, I would like this to sound a little bit more like um, it was recorded in one of Jacques Michel Charles' studios. Like it just magically does it for you somehow. You go too far. Well, did I? <laughs> Ooh, some fun stuff on the uh, mod wheel there. Did I go too far? Not sure. I went somewhere, not entirely. Not entirely sure where it was, but I'm glad it came back. Funkatron 5. Squelchatron 5, more like. <laughs> Massive Ego. Yeah, the sound thinks it's it. Sounds good. Mm, yeah, we like that. Uh, so, if you remember the rush, the one I really liked um, from playing it earlier, let's see what it sounds like in the dark edition. Sort of vowely vibe to it there. Carrier pigeon. Where's that? <laughs> How? Where's that come from? <laughs> but, hmm? Eh? Ooh. Um, answers on a postcard, my friends. What was that? <laughs> Is it like some memory? <laughs> <laughs> from, a, from a past um, version of Zebra? Oh, I don't know what that was. Ooh, mystery competition. And there's no prize, um, except for being able to humble me and tell me I'm stupid. Which a lot of people would pay for. Calamari Kalahari. Ooh, that's got a lovely bass end, doesn't it? Maggot. Maggot. All right, let's just find out how reasonable the reasonable bass is. Didn't we play last time around? I think we played metal, right? Did we? Interesting, Mr. Bond. Uh, where are we 
good on here. I can't play it. Remember what we played last time? Oh, I don't think we played this one. Very crisp. Sweet boy. <laughs> filtering on that one. I drink soy milk, don't care. <laughs> nice bit of four on the floor there. What's this one? Well, that's very grungy, isn't it? Dirty, dirty noise. Uh, pads, armoured si sideboard sounds fun. I seem to remember it like chocolate. Named after, but absolutely no connection to uh, the, the classic Kate Bush track, Experiment 4. Which has a really, really great video, if you've never seen it. Because it, it must be from sort of the mid to late 80s, and it's got Hugh Laurie and Dawn French in it. Really very surprising. And who doesn't love Kate Bush? Amazing woman, amazing woman. Oh yeah, baby. Well, isn't it worth stumping up the cash just for that? Mm. Yes, it is. Breath of Life. Is that a is that an Indiana Jones thing? I can't remember whether that's a reference to <laughs> that popped into my head as a reference to Indiana Jones. All that absolutely awful Tomb Raider sequel with Angelina Journey. I don't think it was that. No, that was Cradle of Life, wasn't it? Cradle of Filth, more like. <laughs> okay, as we come into the sequences, it is the beginning of the end. So true, so true. Uh, let us not forget that there's always stuff on the, the Perform uh, XY pads. Filter's pretty... Uh, warp. Lots of sounds. Envelope. Tight envelope. Weird and lush one. Dry as a bone, but wet as a fish. So there's lots of control. I'm good to you, aren't I? Aren't I good? Discombobulatory. Mm, that's an interesting one. There's some unusual stuff.
Abend und morgen wird das nicht mehr. Band Party. I've used a lot more band pass filters, I feel, in, uh, in this than before. Running into the red, does it? No, not really. <laughs> Quite a softy, really. Well, I don't think I've mentioned on this particular video, there is, there is some influence from uh, films from the noughties, uh, 2000s, um, by remote control, Media Ventures composers, Hans Zimmer, Harry Gregson Williams, and uh, yeah, a bit of John Powell as well, I suppose. Um, stuff basically um, where I said, where I got interested in film music but through dance music. I've always been a dance music guy up until very recently. And although I loved strings and piano, I wasn't really into film music so much. And then I started hearing Harry Gregson Williams' work. Um, Man on Fire, Deja Vu, that kind of thing. And I thought it was absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. And so I was hearing sounds I was familiar with from my, my interest in dance and electronic music being used in film soundtracks. And it was just, it was just like, oh, wow, you can do that. I love it. Um, so there is this, there's a lot of nods to stuff like, I say, Man on Fire, Deja Vu, Black Hawk Down, uh, Born Identity, all that sort of thing. Um, it's it's just sort of it's something that felt like it it went quite naturally with the the game the synthy game soundtrack stuff. Oh, that's not an ARP. Don't play it like an ARP. <laughs> Playing it like an ass, not like an ARP. Hmm. So there we go. That is volume two of Zebra Lazarus. Um, it's it's not different to volume one in any sort of aesthetical or sonic sense. I've literally just gone through all the patches I had for Lazarus and I've done half of them in volume one and half of them in volume two. So that if you know, you're not prepared to spunk all the money on the bundle, which there will be available, you'll be able to buy all 800 patches in one go. Um, if you just want to get one version or just one dark version, um, you have that option and you're not particularly missing. You're only missing out on the sheer number of things. There isn't sort of any particular style of sound that is included in volume one that isn't in volume two and vice versa. So don't feel left out if you only want to pick up one of them, basically is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so Zebra Lazarus, two volumes, two dark editions, four sound sets in total. Uh, plus a bundle which smushes them all together with a little bit of a discount on top. And it's it's I reckon it's a really versatile sound set. It's very synthy, it's pretty modern. Uh, I'm just trying to be ultra cutting edge or anything, but it's just, you know, it's not it's not harking back to old school analog or anything like that. It's 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 particularly designed to have a more crunchy, gritty modern edge. Uh, but it's very, very synthy. Um, it's been really fun to just do something that's just synthy. I've been doing lots of organic and noisy stuff and dark stuff. And this this gave me an opportunity just to have a bit of fun, really. And and if you do get the big bundle and you've got all 800 patches, well, it's absolutely something you're going to be dipping into again and again um, for years and years. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching, uh, especially to those of you who have also watched Volume 1 and Volume 2. And so you can compare the two and go, oh, he said that in the other one, but he didn't say it here. Why not? I don't know. Um, if that takes fancy. <laughs> Build a spreadsheet, um, you know, project it onto the wall of the House of Commons. I don't care. Do what you like. I'm not your servant. Anyway, <laughs> thanks again for watching. I've gone mad. Uh, it's been lovely. See you soon. Ta-ta!